Good evening, everyone. Oh, where's he going? Hey, look at me. Why has he lost me? <laughs> Fucking me. Good evening everyone, how are we? You all right? Or good morning, or whatever it might be for you lot. Yes, yeah, so I bought you today, I've come up to the um, up onto the Ashdown Forest again. The aim today is I want to show you guys how I go about, where are you going camera? Stick with me. So I've just got one of these Osmo pocket things now. First time I've ever used it, and I really don't know what I'm doing. It meant to stay on my face, like that. It. Yeah, up into the forest, with the idea being that I'm going to show you how I go about doing a focus stack. The target is what's called the Airman's Grave, which if you're from around this way then you're uh, familiar with it. Other people might not be, but basically it's a, it's a grave for an airman, believe it or not. <laughs> Quite obvious. But yeah, I took a shot here last year actually and... Um, this is why I thought this would be a good place to come for the focus stack because of the way I took the picture, which you'll see in a bit, I'll talk you through. Um, I thought I'd come back again because I didn't get the best conditions for it last year. But today, if I flip you around, you can see how beautiful it is up here this evening. A really nice sunset. So what I'm hoping we could get is a, um, well, an interesting sky, basically. An interesting, uh, potentially blue hour. I'll take a few shots, I'll talk you through what I'm going to do. I'll take a few shots and just sit and wait really and see what the sky does. What I'm hoping it'll do is I'll either get one of those nice, beautiful, magenta-like skies. That'd be the best one, or maybe a bit of a red, fiery sky. I don't know, something in the background just to make it a bit more interesting. But but yeah, I'll, yeah I just want to talk you through it. I've probably, I think I might, I don't know if I've stuck it up in this video uh, before this or not, because I was dry, on my way here. And like I say, it's beautiful up here this evening. And when you come past, uh, I don't know if it's Holly's Car Park or wherever it is, you drive over the forest and you get these views to your right, right across the valley. And it was absolutely stunning, so I couldn't resist. I had to uh, pull over and stop and take a photo. So if I haven't put it up already, I'll stick it up now. But I'm sure I already have put it up. So, yeah, so what I'll do, I'll stop waffling on. I might leave you some crappy b-roll it's a nice boring b-roll for you all and then i'll get myself down there and set up and i'll talk you through what it is uh, how i go about well i'll talk you through the photo my composition my perspective and then how i do a focus stack so yeah i shall see you in a little bit Yeah, so I've got myself set up here on the airman's grave. The sky looks like, if you can see it, it's gonna it's lighting up and it's gonna give us something, um, yeah, a pretty background to the, uh, the little tree here that's in the airman's grave. So let me flip this round. Um, let's see if I can get you looking at the back of my camera. So I don't know how well you'll be able to see this. First time I'm trying it with one of these Osmo pockets, so we'll see what she does. But basically, if I brighten that up so you guys can see what's going on, what I've done is, is I found some of this uh, yellow stuff. Uh, heather? Is it heather? I'm sure that's heather. Prickly and yellow. I think it's heather. I'm on the Ashdown Forest. It's covered in the bloody stuff. But anyway, I found some of that, and um, I'm using that, so I'll focus on that as a bit of foreground interest. To the um, to this composition here, and I've placed the, uh, the grave itself, which you can just see here in the little tree in the midground, and obviously using the uh, the sky as my as my background. The because um, of uh, 
to cut a long story short, basically, I'm too close to my foreground here to be able to um, use a, a narrow aperture, so like an f11 or f16, and for that to, to get into focus. So because this is close, what I'm going to do is a technique called focus stacking, which I'm sure a lot of you have heard of. So I've set myself up an aperture of f8, because I know f8 is the sharpest um, aperture in this lens that I'm using. So that way, and then what I'll do is I'll focus, probably on the foreground I'll focus, and I'll focus on the mid-ground, well, I'll focus on the foreground, take a picture, focus on the mid-ground, which is the main subject, the grave, and then I'll try and focus somewhere on, for the sky so I can get that in as great a detail as possible. Now, I think at the minute, and then basically what you do is you blend them in, which I'll talk you through in a little while, but. Looking at my histogram here, I'm going to struggle with dynamic range on this camera. So what I'll also do is take an exposure for that sky. And then I'll have a look when I get back. And I may have to blend that in as well, just to get a complete image. But what I'm going to do is expose, ignore the clipping in the highlights. So I'm going to expose for my foreground and my midground, so my main subjects being the, I think we've agreed that's Heather. And then the um, obviously the grave itself. So, so we'll take the first shot. If I turn that, take that away from the screen. Focusing on the foreground. Take that picture. And I'll take the next shot. Focusing on the grave itself. Take that picture. And I'll take a focus on that tree and just bring the exposure down and try and get the detail back in that sky. So if I check that, yeah, that should be about right. We'll take that one there. Now what I'll do now is I'll take these back into Lightroom. Oh, sorry, my legs are cramping up. Back into Lightroom and into, um, yeah, back into Lightroom and into Photoshop. And we'll blend these three images together and, and see what we can make, see if we can get something decent. So I'll, uh, yeah, I'll take that back and I'll run you through that in the, uh, back in the, well, back in my flat <laughs> on my computer. So I'll see you in a little bit. Right, so here we are in, in Lightroom. I've been out and taken the images. I think I said a minute ago, I had sort of missed me. You'll see what I mean. But I've been out there and taken the images. Um, now the reason why I didn't explain in the video, the reason sometimes why you might want to focus stack is uh, if you're using a, a real close foreground subject. So, so like I have here, so the, did we figure out what they were yet? Heather, I think it is. I don't know, the yellow stuff anyway, the plants, are really close to the camera. So I could wind that. Now what I meant to do and what I didn't do, again, I messed up again, was take uh, some other shots at like, different apertures, so like f11, f13, f16, just to show you that, you know, whilst you probably would get the foreground here in focus, the sharpness wouldn't be that great. Uh, having said that, I like I said, I rushed, and uh, yeah, I fucked it up anyway, so it doesn't matter, but <laughs> I defeated the object, but still, there's a reason why you might decide to focus stack, so as you see it, I've focused this first picture, if you remember, I focused on the flowers at the front here, and that brings that into focus, creates that, sh um, makes that sharp. And the next image, I focused on the grave itself, and that makes that sharp. And then on the third image, obviously I just exposed, I'd focused on the tree, but I'd exposed for the, the sky because I haven't got enough dynamic range in my camera to reclaim, and look if I drag down the highlights, reclaim that sky, not. Up here it's all right, but down here it's just all blown out. So yeah, I couldn't do that. But anyway, so focus stacking. So you've got your three images. Now the easiest, there's different ways you can do this, but the easiest way is to use Photoshop. So my process would be, I don't really think I'm gonna to do too much to the image beforehand. The only one I am gonna do something to is the sky itself. Um, yeah, I mean for the process of this, getting this through and done quick. We'll show you what's what. But the only one I will do is because I'm going to blend this sky in afterwards. I will do a little bit of touching up to this. So 
I'll bring a bit more colour into it, get it to landscape. In fact, I will do the profile on all three of those. Get all of those into, into landscape. Just to bring a bit more colour in. But, yeah, so, I'll just have a little bit of a play around, really, just to see. I think the highlights are all right. Just trying to get some of that colour back in the sky. I'll lift the shadows up because I'm probably going to blend that uh, image of the tree into the other ones. So I'll bring the shadows up just to try and get a bit more detail back in that tree. Not going to be much, but what we can. A little bit of punch here in the curves. Somewhere like that, I think. I'll just bring a bit of life into that sky. Something, something like that will do. And then in the highlights, I'm just going to do a bit of sport, what they call colour grading now. I always think of it as split tone. I'm just going to bring a touch of magenta in because you, you can't see it in this image. But that sky was starting to get those magenta tones uh, last night. So I'm just going to bring a bit of that in. Oh, it's too saturated, so ah, somewhere around there, I think that'll do. Right, so to take these, let's take these three into Photoshop. So to do that, you want to highlight all three. Come up the top here, the photo. Click Edit In. And the important part here is you want to open as layers in Photoshop. Not Edit in Photoshop, because that'll just take one photo in. You want to open as layers, and that'll take all three in on separate layers, but inside the same project I think you call it so I'll speed this part up whilst it loads up I think that's done <coughs> excuse me yeah that's done yeah after this as I think I've already said I've caught man flu again so it's law isn't it four day weekend comes around and I think it was Wednesday night Wednesday afternoon I was at work and all of a sudden I started sneezing I was like oh no I know that feeling typical Anyway, never mind. All right, so we've got the uh, the three separate images here. So that's our, I'll just show all them off. That's our sky. That is our uh, mid-ground focus. And that is our foreground focus. So the first thing I do is you want to highlight all these layers down the bottom here. And then you come up to image, uh, up to edit, sorry. And you want to auto align layers. I always leave the projection on auto and then just click OK and what that will do I'll show you now that will orientate all those all three layers so that they're all stacked on top of each other so that when you blend it's seamless to an extent but I think I, I keep saying it I'm going to put a caveat in I messed this up rushing not feeling well anyway we've blended all three layers I'm not fussed about the sky one at the minute because I'm going to paint that in We'll turn that one off. Now what we want to do is highlight just these two layers. So that's the two different focuses. This is <laughs> two different focuses. And then we're going to come back up again up to edit. And then auto blend layers. You don't want a panorama because that's stitching together. You want to stack because we want to stack the two together. And then just click OK. And then let Photoshop do its business. There we go, and you can see now that Photoshop has quite successfully merged those two layers. So it's picked the best fo fo focuses. It's been <laughs> I don't know what the word is. It's picked the best, uh, the sharpest parts of each image and then layer them together. So what it does, if I switch that one off, it rubs out the parts of the other, uh, of one layer that are out of focus so that it can be replaced to things that are in focus. Now I've already sort of had a bit of a run through of this myself before and hence my confession earlier saying that I messed up because I didn't pay enough attention. As you can see, 
not all of the images in focus. I think this is either because it was a little bit breezy. I don't think that's breeze, that's out of focus. I maybe would have narrowed my aperture down a little bit more or taken another focus on that. But in fairness, because of all the mess that's there, I would have narrowed my aperture down. So zoom out, but anyway, there you go. You can see now how you blend layers together for a focus stack. So I hope that makes sense. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just merge those layers together. Merge layers. So that creates one layer now. So I've just got one, one, uh, one, one image. Basically, that's the stacked image of the focus for the foreground and the midground, the main subject there. And then just on the sky, I wanted to bring that sky in. So the way in which I'm going to do that is I'm going to create a layer mask on this layer here. So you just click the little camera looking icon down there, that brings us in a mask. That one, for some reason that is done, so I just want to invert that back. So now, I think I've talked you through this before to be fair on another video, how masks work and where you might use them. So I'm going to use this now to bring that sky back in. So we'll go to... I'm going to brush, we want to make sure here is selected on black and in that way it will paint out, this essentially will just erase, I don't know why I'm pointing you can't see that, it will erase everything where I rub my brush so as you can see the sky is coming back in. And I, was, I think I said I was going to leave the uh, tree as it is let me zoom that in there yeah i was going to use the tree from the um uh sky player just because it uh, I, like i'm as i say if i was doing this as like a some sort of fire, this is just principles for a video to show you like the techniques that you can use if this was a finalized image that i was wanting to uh do something with i would get myself right in here with the zoom and be filling about getting it as neat as I can but I'm not going to do that today because you lot are going to bore me so yeah so we just keep rubbing these bits out now I'm not happy with this bit here either I'm not really entirely happy with the whole image I like the idea I've got a nice sky Kinda like the perspective, like the composition. Though I figured like I took some handheld ones beforehand before I set up a tripod and I much preferred the composition out of one of those. I just wasn't thinking at the time. But I don't mind. Yeah, and then to just neaten it a bit down at the bottom here, at like the horizon level, I'll just take the opacity down on that brush. So I can blend things in a little bit more. Across there, across there, like that. Hopefully. Now see, what I also would do, well, hopefully that looks a bit more natural along there. I think it does. What I'll also probably spend the time doing, I might just give it a quick go now. I'll speed this through. It's just using the new uh, remove tool and taking a whisk. I don't like this here. It's awful. But... I think it's going to be too much fanning about for this video. What's that going to come out like? Hmm. Oh, I've done that in the mask, that's why. <laughs> I'm not going to do it now. I'm not going to do it now. I'll do it another time. I'll get in there a little bit more in detail. In fact, let's just try it quick. Um, let me just merge these layers. Merge layers. So that's one completed image now. Uh, where's the remove tool? I want the remove tool. Well, let's see what she does now. So I'll clean that up a little bit.
It's done a good job. So, anyway, I'm not going to do that now. You've got the principle. What I will do off video, because I don't want this to go on too long, I will sit and just work at this image a bit more so I can get a finalised image. And then, yeah, I'll put it up at the end here. But yeah, I just mainly I wanted to show you the process of focus stacking and explain why you might decide to use it. You might not always want to do it. You probably, if you're a little bit further back, you could get it all sharpened in focus. But yeah, there you go. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll put the finalised image up at the end now. So I'll bid you adieu or a good day or whatever it is. Bye-bye.